What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to focus on breaking down some gameplay. I'm going to do a live commentary about kind of trying to help you understand. So I did a, a, a free scheme on offense and a free scheme on defense based around the Chiefs and regular teams. And I hope what this will do is this will help you kind of see how I use the scheme in a real, real game. And hopefully you can learn from things that I do that are pretty good and things that I do that are not uh, pretty good. Because just like everybody, I miss reads. Um, we're in the completely wrong playbook. Dang it. Oh, man. Well, it looks like we're running the good old bunch wide, which is okay. We can run this. Um, it's actually very similar to the bunch uh, week. We're just going to use the play Z spot. Um, and we're not going to be able to block the tight end, though. So if I have the opponent, I'm immediately going to make a blitz. So anyway, we'll go to Z spot here. And there's your drag. Don't want to like. Don't, there's a lot of weaknesses to this formation for a lot of different actual. Actually, for a lot of different reasons. Um, but it's not, it's not terrible. I actually was going to run this offense, this formation. So we'll run it, and hopefully it'll get something out of it. But basically you want to use Z-Spot, kind of like the deep attack play. So you take Conley, you're going to run him off. What I'll do is I'll probably end up um, kind of doing... The problem is Kelsey. Kelsey's, Kelsey's kind of in the way. Um, actually, a lot. So basically what they're going to do is if they're not going to play hard flats on, on that little drag route, we're going to take it every single time. I mean, literally every single time we will take it. Um, if they are, then we'll work the high-low reads. We'll work some of the other stuff. But until they legitimately either play hard flats or they are on that route the entire time, we're going to throw that route. We're also going to work our our high point passes to Travis Kelsey in the seam. Um, we're trying to force him. See your heavy man pressure, and here you're going to see I can ag I can aggressive catch uh, the Z spot route with a good receiver like a Sammy Watkins type. You can aggressive catch that, and it works pretty good, pretty consistent. Gets underneath almost every zone in the game that I'm aware of. Um, so overall, just a really good route. Okay, so snap through. Here, I'm going to hit my corner. And the corner shames you like every corner does in this year's game. There's like very few corner routes that are actually good this year. It's kind of frustrating that I got the wrong package. Um, it almost might be worth putting him on a smart routed out route. Because corners just don't get open against man to man. So here, no hard flats. So we just throw the little drag, and we continue to work the ball up the field. What I like about this version of the bunch, it's a little bit different than the version that I ran, but I actually think there's some there's some pieces of it. It's not all, and I, I do think the actual standard bunch wide is better, but there are some pieces of it that work a little bit better. I think the verticals play works a lot better from bunch wide. I think the running game works. Oh, I forgot we had curl flat in this package. That changes the game. We have curl flat the package. So curl flat is the one corner in the game, in my opinion, that is actually good. Um, and there are very few corner routes that are actually good. Uh, here we're gonna try just a quick run. Might try it again actually, depending on what look we get. And yeah, why not? We're running again. And I think. Oh, Damian Williams, you gotta get in there. Yeah, we're we'll running. I'm going to try to fake audible here. Let's see if we can't catch him. Oh, thank gosh. Damian Williams. If you have Kareem Hunt, you're easily in. Let's see if we get the right... Oh, we have a wrong defense, too. Basically, it gave us the Chiefs playbook. That kind of sucks. Um, 
well, this will we'll show you nickel three d five. So nickel three d five is actually very similar to the um, to the other defense in the sense of you have one really good blitz. This Tampa two blitz is pretty good, um, and basically what you want to do is adjust out of it. So you call the Tampa two pretty much every play, but you're going to adjust out of it. The good part about this um, defense is you can sub in um, you can sub in your safeties um, at all of your linebacker spots so you don't actually have to use linebackers I think that's pretty cool um, baseline we want to press and we just want to kind of come in here and we'll actually spy this guy here Eric Berry shames us. Dang it, Eric Berry. The good old random streak that works. So again, we want to put our best zone coverage guys at our safeties because we're going to be playing cover two for the majority of the game. Um, in the middle linebacker position, we want to put um, this guy, uh, Murray, probably our best option. And like I said, we're just going to sit... In this uh, Tampa 2, we're going to adjust a lot, though. Uh, you'll see by the end of this. I like to spread my linebackers. I know that it kind of gives them... If they run the ball a lot, then you'll pinch uh, your linebackers more, or maybe you'll bring your safeties down. The problem with this, when you play on the line, for me, I don't know if this happens to any of you, and I don't know if you know how to fix this, let me know, because it drives me insane. But when I try to bring my safeties into the box, it seems like they always like kind of lag out, or they just they don't come down uh, unless I do it right at the beginning of the play, which is not always the best either, because uh, for other reasons. So Steelers Cross is basically where we're going to run every single play so far. But I'll show you some stuff out of that bunch wide. Um, it's there's like I said, there's very similar concepts. So if you watched, you'll see that the bunch wide. There's some things that it does. They're actually better than the uh, gun bunch weak formation. This guy's doing what pretty much everybody at this point in the game are gonna do. They're gonna run cross your house with drags underneath, and they're gonna force you to. They're basically gonna try to put some stress on your user. Well, what you want to do um, through the course of a game, obviously, and through the course of some chess, you basically want to try to get them in a situation where they think they're, they've pretty much guaranteed that you're always going to go to the cross route. You're always going to go to the cross route. You're always going to go to the cross route, always. At that moment, that critical moment, though, you're going to jump back down to the drag, and you're going to take it away. That's, in essence, and you might cross man it or... You know, you might do some adjustment to change it up, but generally you know. See, I can't move Barry. I don't know why, but I know I can't move him, and then my whole defense just freaked out thanks to the good old left trigger crap that happens. Basically, left trigger is kind of useless to me on defense now because every time I click it, something crazy happens. All right, so third and two here. So, in this situation, really, it's okay. It's okay if he gets the first. I'm not mad at it. Um, I don't... I don't... He's clocking me here. A lot of people do this in regs. Because the play clock is longer, so you can really... You can really clock pretty good. And the fact that I got the ball first is... If he can clock me out here. So... That being said, I don't want him to get the first down. But if he gets the first down, it's not the end of the world, and i got to prepare. Um, what's he probably going to do? He's probably going to run the ball. I mean, he's probably going to run stretch or dive. Um, if he runs stretch, I feel like I got him. If he runs dive, he might have a shot, and he runs dive. Uh, and we're right there. So we'll call a timeout right there, a quick timeout. That's going to force him to have to think about things, uh, if he's going to go field goal or not. And it's also going to allow us to get into our red zone defense. If you're in a 3-4 space playbook, 3-4 base playbook, to me the best red zone defense in the game 
is this little package right here. Um, three, four odd. You pinch your line. If they're not, if they're not in a running, then you just uh, blitz two people spy. So you crash them out, and then you spy them. If they're running set, you crash line down, and they'll play the middle. They'll play the middle run, and then I create a makeshift cover two out of it. I basically blitz all my linebackers, and then I put them in zones, and then I uh, I got the safeties over top. So what it does is you're you're in a makeshift cover two. Here, Madden didn't help me out at all, and he doesn't get out of bounds. He does end up getting the first down. That's pretty significant because now what he can do is he can take all the clock. So same defense. Again, this is my basic red zone D. And Todd really gives me a little, little slap in the face there. So you're pretty much guarantee that he's gonna throw flats. He threw it. He threw it last time. So I'm playing hard flats here. Um, he threw flats last time. I got the hook curls in case he throws slant. Well, I want to get that guy into a bird hook or that left side guy actually because he'll play up into that seam a little bit. Um, I need to get that guy in a bird hook as well. So I got slants on both sides. My job is the drag or the crosser, the playmaker stuff, all that junk. Here he throws right through my guy. That's awesome. Man, it's so fun sometimes. Um, also, if you're in a special team situation, you always want to come out in this load block right. Here's why. Um, it at least forces them to have to think about it. Um, you want to at least do something. Um, if you just don't, you know, I mean, you you want to have something that forces them to think about things. You want 11 plays, 99 yards. That's awesome. Right? couple fourth down situations we could have capitalized on. Probably should have ran hard flats on that fourth down. We ran clouds and he hit us with a little baby flat route. Todd really trucked us into the 10 book too. So now we're in a really bad situation uh, because we've got to score before halftime. Uh, we have to at least get three. We really, we really need seven. Uh, but we've got to have three. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So you're already kind of thinking about that in your head. You're thinking about where you need to get to to get three as an offense. Um, and I'm just going to come out my bunch. They have the play curl flat, so what I'm going to do is actually replace the seam divide with curl flat, and I'm going to replace Z spot with seam divide, and I'm going to come out and Z spot every play. So because they have curl flat, that's kind of a game changer. Because now we can run some other concepts that I really like to run from the bunch. Um, so basically, you're going to do this. We're going to mesh. And we get curl flat. There's a dot. So curl flat, the the curl the 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 deep out route. It gets so far back. Um, it just it just gets so far back there that most zones can't in the game can't really play it. And then we're back in our standard standard Z spot setup. Here we know we've got to get out of bounce, so we don't spin back inside. We basically try to run him right out of bounds. So here we're working the ball, and we're not looking too shabby. Um, going to go back to curl flat here. Another thing that's interesting about this set, you can put Kelsey on a hitch route and it can serve as a really nice viable check down for you. I like to just put him on a, on a seam streak. Um, if you want to motion him, you can. You'll see how comes, he comes right into this spot. So I'll give you two pass protectors there. If you want to go max protect, here we do. And it's a very stupid decision because Aaron Donald I don't think you know, I don't, most people don't think know this about max protect, and this is becoming something very, very important to me defensively, or offensively. In max protect schemes, the reason I don't like max protecting 
is if the opponent does not blitz. Here, here Aaron Donald just shames us. But if the opponent does not blitz, and you're and you're in match protect, not running back protect. Running back protect's different. Running back protect basically isolates one player, and you're trying to basically get a. Um, here I need Tyreek Hill to make a play, get out of bounds. So that was kind of a business decision there from Tyreek Hill. Um, because of where the clock was, I probably should have tried to keep going and tried to get the first. I didn't. So now I'm in a fourth and nine situation where I don't really want to go for it. I want to take my three um, because I'm going to need it down the road. So I take my three, and, and we're going to be okay with that. Now the problem is that um, he made a couple of really critical sacks on that drive. Uh, and if you notice why, and I want to explain this a little bit, if you're in a max protect scheme and they don't go max protect, what you're basically gonna, what's basically going to happen is your best linemen are going to block nobody, and your worst linemen, which is your tight end and your running back, they're going to be the ones that are going to try to block the people that are rushing. That's why I personally don't really like max protect schemes unless I know that they're actually going to be there's a, there's a decent chance that they're going to be blitzing a lot of people um, so uh, take that for what it's worth so here we're going cover two I can't remember how he I thought he just got a few runs on this really he's doing a good job with the clouds with the cloud flats. Doing a pretty good job with the cloud flats. But so right here the strategy is pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna run we're gonna run cover two with a spy, blitz two people, and and try to just get to halftime here. Uh, we're actually gonna throw our outside guys in quarters because of the down and distance. Three seconds, he can't clock it and kick. This is the last play of the half. Therefore, everybody's going to be in coverage deep. And when you put your... The, the best deep coverage for my money is basically what I call cover five. It's cover two from your safeties and then from your... Um, cover two from your safeties and then from your outside guys, it's um, you put them in quarters. And then you take your middle linebacker and you put them in a deep blue... And to me, that's one of the better coverages in the game that you can use um, to stop a lot of the deep stuff, like the crosses and the, um, and then you lurk the middle underneath, and you can throw another guy in his own. You can do some things with this. Three three five is very different than um, our four three. Three three five is really more of a coverage based defense, meaning that you're gonna you're gonna do a lot of cross manning because every linebacker within that defense can all cross man for multiple reasons their safety is number one here probably anticipating another HP die if he does go with it um, when you're facing when you're in 335 and they run the ball run the ball run the ball run the ball I don't really feel uncomfortable when someone just runs on me uh, I know a lot of people that do though um, and so there's some things that you can certainly do to stop the run on a three through five. What a, the main thing is pinch your line. If you pinch your line, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, there, Ron Parker just gets lost. I don't know what happened to him. So Tampa two. And just gonna run him off and. We're in a little out route. I want to make him... One of the things that I like about the... When you get into a Madden game and you... You know, a lot of people say, well, they run the same play all the time. Not really. Um, what happens is they run the same look. 
the coverage does change. Um, like right there, I'm in hard flats. Um, still completed on me, which is awesome. But the mean, my point is, um, what you want, you're going for on defense is you're going for a coverage that looks the same, but is a completely different coverage. To confuse. But you have to establish a long-based shell. My long base shell that I want to establish is oh, give me the pick. Um, is cover two with a cloud. So now a critical down right here, third down, um, third down and four. I'm going hard flats, and I know my job is the crossing route. And there we catch him. So right there, we've been established, and I think for the entire first half, we were in cover two shell the entire time. On the last two downs, we called cover three with card fl cloud flats. Because he completed the out route um, in tight coverage, I felt like he did not realize that it was not a cover two. Because he still got his completion, he still got some advancement. So in a critical down, we go back like fourth and inches, we go back to cover three with hard flats. Um, we didn't just call hard flats. We made a couple of other adjustments. We still put the line, same linebacker that was in the deep blue in cover two. He was also in the deep blue in cover three. And then that safety that was typically in a deep blue zone in a cover two scenario, he actually was in a hook curl, and he came down and played that crossing route, um, that crossing route, which allowed us to focus on the drag, and we ended up catching him. Now, the thing that you don't want to do as a defense that's what most people will do. They'll just continue to call the play that got them to pick because it's the play that got them to pick, so it must be the best play. No. Immediately, we're back in our cover two shell, and we're just saying, do what you want. Here you see he forces one up. We drop, I think two people dropped interceptions on that play. But you see what I'm saying? You don't just call the play because it got you the pick one time. You have to set it up over and over again. Drag crosser, drag crosser, drag crosser, drag crosser. There we get a block shed. Over and over again. Over and over again. And it establishes in the quarterback's mind that um, that they're not going to be able to throw. Here we're going to do some cross manning out of this just to kind of make things a little bit more difficult. Uh, that's a really tough throw. Dang it. So here, same situation, but we're not going to do, we're going to make it look exactly the same. Everything's going to look exactly the same, but we're going to call cover two. We're not going to call cover three. We're going to call cover two with cloud flats. Why? Because last time on this down, we called cover three. See, he went to that route right there, that triangle route, and we were able to capture it because cover two, you have to hold it just a little bit longer than you do against cover three, and therefore, he threw it too fast, kind of forced it in there, and we're able to get it. Okay? So that's a little bit of the strategy behind when you have to kind of pick and choose your spots. Um, and when you get a stop, that doesn't mean that that's just the best play ever. What I like about this bunch wide that I feel like a lot of that the normal bunch does not provide is the verticals. I think is a lot better. I think it's a lot better of a play um, for a lot of different reasons. But the wideness of the formation, because it's not compressed, because it's even it's it's compressed, but because it's not tight, okay, it's compressed, but it's not tight. Meaning, the 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 players are compressed together, but they're not tight into the line of scrimmage. They have space. That space opens up opportunity. So let's play. We're gonna play like seam divide here. Now eh, we can't run that play right now. Uh, let's get back out of that. And just run our standard, standard bunch, standard uh, little route. And Tyreek Hill is going to be a beast for us. I don't think we even got that called right. Um, but what I'm talking about with the, with the wide bunch, another thing about game planning and syst systematic thought, he's got to play hard flats. He does. He has to. If he doesn't play hard flats, he's in trouble. 
and we're going to continue to work the ball up the field. He knows that. So he's going to play some hard flats. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to try to use her some stuff. I definitely think verticals is much better from a bunch wide look because it's harder for them to get out on the C, on the on the wheel. It's it's harder for them to defend this tight end streak. It's just it's because there's more room. Because they're more they're more spread out. Bunch they're really in there. Uh, tight together. One player can guard three players for about a second. And I think that's one of the major differences. Not but then there's a lot of things like the bunch wide, it just doesn't have the same amount of effective routes that the bunch does. Okay. So Z spot here. Uh, running it right in here is kind of difficult. Uh, he ends up giving us a blessing in disguise and allows us to hit hill over the middle. Again, he didn't run his hard flats. We took our drag. If he would have ran hard flats like we thought he was going to, we were going to hit that uh, corner route or we, we could have hit some other routes. The Z spot route post is still effective, um, but you only get that type of post route um, in a bunch look from a bunch wide formation. So if you want to run that specific post route, then I highly recommend the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs playbook that we're in. It has uh, all the good plays for a bunch. Um, so, anyway. The only problem is you can't match with tag, so if they're running nickel blitz, you could be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so 17-7, little game plan here. 17-7 means he has to get a, uh, it's two possessions in five minutes. Two scores in five minutes. How likely do you think that's going to happen? It's probably not going to happen unless I let it happen. Meaning, the way that I play defense is very important right now. The core thing that I can't do is I cannot allow a one-play touchdown. As long as I don't allow a one-play touchdown, I'm good. Because the time, because the pressure, because of everything in this whole deal. Um, I know what I can allow, what I can't. There's a, they're going to try to force things, as he just did right there. They're going to try to force things. They're going to try to set them up with these little short underneath routes, and they're going to try to get you to lurk on them, and I just choose not to. Okay? So, anyways, uh, good game to this guy. Hope you enjoyed the video commentary, and I hope that something in this video showed you uh, we were able to adjust.